Welcome to the table. Go ahead, take a seat. I'm just about to begin. I am McGarren, and today we're actually joined by two very wonderful and affordable DMs. Uh, this is a DM exclusive, so if you're not a DM, this may not apply to you, but if you are a fan of the show, please go ahead, sit down, and enjoy. The information that we are going to give tonight, and probably the jokes that we're going to tell, is going to be as entertaining as anything else we've done. Uh, tonight we have, of course, returning Bishop. Uh, Bishop's been with us for a very, very long time. A fantastic DM. Um, I could definitely vouch for it. I've been in several of his games. I've enjoyed each one of them immensely. Bishop, how are we doing tonight? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Uh, no complaints here. Uh, glad to be here. Glad you invited me. I'm forward to uh, doing it. Thank you very much. And of course, the OG, the old man with the uh, memory issues, we have returning night. Oh, um, Sock, uh, when I moved to when I moved to the area, you were actually the first DM that I had, and I gotta say, it was just amazing just playing with you. Your your stories, your characters, especially, are just absolutely entertaining. Fantastic DM yourself. Um, I know that our styles kind of um, we have very different styles. Whereas I try to do more of an epic story, you tend to do more of like local stories. You know, um, saving a town versus saving the world. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't put a lot of heart and soul into your games. And I really want to thank you so much for being back on with us today. My pleasure, my man. It was so, oh, so sweet. <laughs> oh, cry. Fear my eye. <laughs> so, but that being said, um, all three of us probably have hit that wall, have hit that block at one point, um, where we have faced like a burnout, where we know that. You know, in a couple of days, a game. You know, we have a game that we need to run. The players are all looking forward to it. We're getting messages or we're getting phone calls like, "Oh man, I can't wait for it. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I can't wait to fight the big bad." And you're just like sitting at a, you're sitting at your computer with a blank, with a blank word document, or you're sitting at your notebook and you can't think of anything, and you are just have no motivation. Has any yeah. of you guys uh, felt that? Funny enough, you sent that sent the conversation for this week and it was actually the day that i was having my first in-person or my second in-person D D game again after the whole covid and i literally sat there and was like drawing a blank and i'm like do i not like dungeons and dragons anymore am i done with this i'm not but like that was a low there's definitely a roadblock there and it, it definitely happens to all of us. There's always there's always moments of that, I'm sure. For everyone. That, that that's all that's always hard. It's you know, especially, you know, you're looking at like, do I like Dungeons and Dragons anymore? Do I like tabletop RPGs? And the answer is yes, but just the motivation to get to do the game. I know I have a Tuesday game and some days I just like I have no idea what to do with myself. I have no idea. Yeah. You know, what's going on when I run the Sunday night games? Um, we've been on break from the adventures for, for months. And part of that was because, you know, I had I had a lot of personal stuff going on. But the other part is, like, I couldn't come up with any stories. <laughs> so. And you can't really give yourself free time because every time you sit down for free time, it's like, you're all blank. Yeah. If you're a DM out there, just know that you're not the only one. Um, yeah, no way. It's writer's block. You've heard of it before. It happens to every creative uh, out, outlook. Outlet. Outlet, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my, some of mine's work-related, so it's like, I, I, w I would like to have the time, but when you're working weird hours, you're working different hours, you're working shifts, you're working, you know, one week yeah. you're working day shift, next week you're working night shift, and you're working weekends, and you're working, oh yeah, by the way, you're working another weekend, and you know, you said sometimes that happens too. Real life hits, throws your curveball. You're like, and you just don't have the time. Sit down with you know whatever free time you have. That's the time you're probably trying to either sleep or trying to <laughs> regroup. Yeah. yeah, and in between that busy time, you give yourself that free. You think maybe some green grass will help you, and no, it doesn't. It just makes you more distracted, and it's just the worst. But how do you how do you guys usually? I want to know what. Um, especially you bishop uh what's your usual way of like getting over it 
rather be an hour before campaign or like during campaign or like when you're prepping to usually um, get out of that rut sometimes it, it varies um sometimes i do like to prepare and then other times i can do stuff like on the fly like i had already have an idea but maybe i just didn't have the time to put it all down on paper and um i just did it about probably like a couple weeks ago where i I got home from work one day, like I had a good, had a good idea. I hadn't had a chance to put it on paper yet, and I just drew stuff on the fly. And it's like, man, <sighs> and then you're like you're ruptured. <laughs> it was very accurate when you said writer's block, because that's basically what this is. It is a writer's yeah. block. It is a you have no creativity right now. Me personally, what I like, what I do is I cheat. Um, I have so many resource books. I have. Uh, for Dungeons and Dragons or any game that I play, I use modules. So if I can't think of anything right now, one of the best friends that a DM has access to are modules. Because if you're a new DM, if you're an old DM, if you open up a module, it's already a pre-made game. It's They already have a list of characters, list of names, list of treasure, list of items, list of monsters to fight. You can basically DM on autopilot at a certain point, especially if it's well written. And for Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Wizards of the Coast is doing a very good job with their modules. Oh, especially if you go into uh, what do they have? Not Unearth Arcana. What's their Adventure League? Adventure, books. yeah, the Adventure League. Like books. a dollar, and you can find some real top quality, like top rated modules from there. Yeah, um, another really good uh, another really good source is RPG Drive Through. If you guys ever heard of that, no, I haven't. Uh, so RPG Drive Through. Actually, the fun part is, is that that is on our Christmas special. That's where I got the adventure from. Is it's a website that has um, some of the stuff that they have is pay as you will. So if you like the module, you can actually you can say, hey, yeah, I'll give the creator a dollar or two dollars or five dollars or whatever you want to. They have a lot of free resources for people to use. They have a lot of things. And it's not just Dungeons and Dragons. It's a, it's a lot of tabletop RPGs. And it books. They have PDF files. It's absolutely amazing. And Yeah, I think I think this is the one I was thinking of. I didn't know I was on this website, actually. <laughs> I thought it... Because I always went under the Dungeon Master Guild tab of it. And I just thought it was a Wizards of the Coast thing. No. But, no, yeah, I've been here before dmskill.com yeah yeah no this place is this is exactly so i agree with you completely this is exactly what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> uh, um yeah no and you can go through themes in this thing and everything like that yeah yeah so that's so that's one of the things that i like to do if i can't think of anything you know i'll look at a module i'll open up one of the giant books that i have that have I was like, okay, well, my characters are eighth level. Um, this this part of the adventure is eighth level, you know. And the nice part about Dungeons and Dragons, or the nice part about tabletop RPGs, is if you're the DM, you don't have to tell your characters everything about your world. That's one of the things that a lot of DMs do, and I feel like they shouldn't. They they just have these giant info dumps. Every city, every town that they go to, there's like, okay, well, here's all the information that you need. If you keep this, if you keep the story loose enough. You can add stuff into your story at any given point, and your players are not going to know the difference. I was running a game, and I couldn't think of anything, and I opened up, I believe it was... Oh, Prince... It's supposed to be as tough as nails is like the... Uh... Oh, Princess of the Apocalypse. Uh, so, yeah. I so I opened up Prince of the... Princess... Uh, Prince... Princess of the... God! La, 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 la. Princess of the Apocalypse. I opened yeah, up yeah. Princess of the, the Apocalypse. Yeah, the new Disney show. <laughs> princess of the apocalypse continue <laughs> wizards of the coast it's confirmed wizards of the coast bought out by disney yeah give it time yeah um so princess of the apocalypse and there is a section where you run into a drag where you run into a dragon now the dragon won't kill you it's just an rp it's just an rp thing so actually i sent them to that abandoned house for them to run to role play with the dragon that took the entire night and it was no prep work for me to do the, the rp was great you know it gave it gave me a sections like these are the goals of this npc this is what she, um, she wants out of the world this is what she would tell the characters this is what she'll do and using those i did it an entire night without 
any prep work and, and none of my characters knew the difference they're like they walked away from it. they're like wow that was really cool i'm so glad you know that was really fun i had a lot of fun i can't wait for next week and it gave me the breathe it gave me the breathing room that i needed to you know to go back to my homebrew stuff but those resources are something that a dm should invest in like even if you go like even if you go to these websites or even if you go to these forums you can get these resources to help you in those times that you don't have anything planned yeah, i had that same instance with the one shot that my nephew asked me to do i was like i didn't really know what i was going to do so i was like you know trying to come up with a good idea for a good one shot so if you're familiar with the campaign it was an older one it's called the isle of dread and it just redid it for 5e so it just came into my head i'm like you know what i could probably just do like a, not the whole campaign just do like a quick one shot just out of that one module just you know come up with a little plan to get them to go to the aisle just for a little bit and, and just explore just just enough for a one shot meet some objectives and i had had some things thought out in my head and what also helped me was that one of the scenes i came up with was uh, like because i wanted i was trying to relate to movies too where they got attacked by like a giant octopus so you know mm -hmm. pirate sort of caribbean so it's not like you have to think of modules too you can think of hey that's kind of a cool idea maybe i can make this work and then at the at the end they were basically doing like a king kong scene because there was a giant ape at the end but they didn't have to fight him they actually uh, came up with a good idea and didn't have to fight him you know my you know my go-to uh a little bit off subject of uh coming up with ideas but my go-to one shot for new players if i ever have to like last second a bunch of drunk people to party you're like let's try dungeons and dragons brian wait you know? how wait hold up before you start the story what? how often does that happen to you quite often considering really? i'm the local board game and D, &D guy <laughs> and i always bring it up i'm like yeah D, &D is great and everyone's like let's try it let's try it and then someone goes brian knows how to play D, &D. and i'm like well i do have a seven set in my car at all times so i mean <laughs> of course and of course you want to introduce D, &D. why wouldn't you right so you're really drunk out of your mind and high as hell and you're writing on a actually this happened last weekend uh i was writing down on a piece of paper str D -A -D -E -X -C -O -N, and just writing numbers next to them like i'm like all right the you know the plus three plus two plus one zero negative one i'm like doing as quick as i can for everyone <laughs> um just to make characters i'm like just do it and i'll do the math for you right but ultimate one that always works in almost any scenario the nazi from the future okay it's it's a classic it's uh uh, uh trade routes are being attacked by a strange man in black uh, with a magical like boom wand and and fireballs that come from small metal pebbles and uh they end up just finding him in this like metal cave and it's a spaceship that came from the future oh. and like i just always have them like chase him down find his lair and no one, and, and even if i get someone who knows how to play who's like i'm a i'm a warlock and i understand every language and i'm like yeah but you've never heard and no god has ever heard german so <laughs> no one understands this man he's like he claimed it and he's like just screaming that's a that's a great little um just because just because it's such a great reveal when they find that like you do not describe him as a nazi like you don't really recognize what he is like you describe it as if you're like describing it to a stranger mm -hmm. like a circle with uh a, a white circle in the center and what looks to be a cross like you know it's just i don't know and they get to kill a nazi so you know, who doesn't have who doesn't have fun doing that what one of my favorite one of my favorite uh dungeons the dragons groups was with a entire group of of language nerds like um my my, my sweet burrito uh she has a bunch of she has a bunch of uh, friends she's a language teacher she teaches french oh yeah so uh they got they all got around so like um French teacher, Spanish teachers, all you know, all these different language, all these different languages, and at one point we actually sat down. It's like, okay, well, let's figure this out. It's like, what what language is the D and D language? Like, was the equivalent of D and D languages? So I think German is actually draconic. Oh. <laughs> mm. So and French is Elvish. 
the french is, french is elvish uh spanish is actually abyssal but the tieflings speak it yeah yeah so it's good yeah it was, it was, uh what would dwarf be if german's already taken nordic oh german is technically nordic russian yeah. celtic uh, Ga gaelic probably well, that sounds awesome we're off topic <laughs> but anyway, anyway we okay, do okay. that we do that so it's yeah. fine uh, uh, okay, <laughs> okay. <Moving on. laughs> i will have to say best suggestion for getting out of raid writer's block this is how i always do it mm -hmm. because i'm unlike you and i don't know about you bishop um but i'm illiterate as hell uh uh reading is a bitch for me and everything like that and like just sitting down like with a good module and everything that takes me a long time mm -hmm. so best way to kickstart your ideas read monster descriptions yes that is, that is the pinnacle of how you do it yes Open up any monster manual whether it be xanther or xanathars you know mordekanans if you're a high level characters just the classic monster manual and just read the small description next to it. Read the description next to the red cap, and you'll immediately just come up with an idea on how to like incorporate that into a small adventure. There are some really cool monster lore that you can base an entire um, arc, an entire campaign over. And you'll come up with it like that, even though it's just a paragraph yeah. in the description. I mean, my favorite characters came from that practice, and. Uh, it. i'm saying they're my favorite uh uh, uh <laughs> god underwater dudes i know how they look they have their two fists in front of them and they're a fish head and they're like oh, 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 oh. merfolk uh uh <laughs> kutoa oh uh, kutoa oh, yeah i love the kutoa they're nuts they're crazy and and just reading their lore of how they just like summon gods into existence from their own beliefs and or or even and it even gives you some twists in there when you read the descriptions like with the kutoa where it's like a powerful wizard will find a kutoa worshiping site and disguise themselves as the god and a wizard will just stumble into having a kutoa army in seconds and you're like bam done so perfect i can go from there like, one of one of my favorite creatures is the slogs have you read the have you read the description and like how they operate the slots do uh slots those are like they look like evil frogs yeah they're almost. evil frogs they're evil frogs yeah, and there's one that's like a, a necklace gem they're from I... the they're from the elemental plane of chaos they are pure chaos and so one of the things that they do is the only way to breed is they infect other people with um they scratch on the person and basically lay eggs in that body and then like a few days yeah. later a new slot will pop out but it's really cool because a red slot red slots can only produce blue slots and blue slots can only produce red slots but if they find a high if they find a spell caster it creates a green slot and so you can run an entire campaign where these slots are going out and just grabbing people to make more to make more slots because they're looking for a they're yeah, looking breeding. to yeah they're well they're looking to, for someone to create a green slot because the green slots are their leaders like oh we don't have anybody yeah. to boss us around today uh let's let's go tr let's go make one and so like you can do an entire you can do an entire campaign over that because there are so there's so many different levels of slots it's just a lot of fun i mean for fuck's sake you just gave me an idea i was actually I needed one for my space campaign next when next Monday, and I think I might pick that. And that's like that. and that's actually the next part of this is that speaking to other DMs will help you get out of your rut. That too. Because you're not an you're not an island, you're not alone. You know, talking to like, you know, you can call up your you can call up a friend, you can call up like, hey, um, you know, I, I've done this several times where I've just called up someone's like, hey, I don't know how where to take my story from. They're like, well, tell us about it. And they're like, and I and I'll go through them. And they're like, well, what if what if this happens? Like, it's like, oh my god, that idea is absolute garbage. But I have an even better idea. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fucking mess. But you're just like, oh, your idea is dumb, but I thought of one better because. Yeah. yeah, I've done that with a guy. And he well, two guys at work that I work with because they're in my group, and one of them does his own campaign and. You know, 
one he does one and another guy does his campaign he's doing Strahd actually uh, he's kind of new but he's got new players but yeah I was giving him like the other guy I was giving him good ideas like for his final boss fight uh, and I forgot exactly what I told him but basically I was just trying to give him some more options uh, to kind of like give some more flavor to his to the end because now with the whole um, Tasha's um, out there where you can do a parlay with a monster so I've done it once and I thought it was kind of cool concept to basically get them to the point where the party's like so out of the resources are all done, but they're not quite dead, but they're like, okay, this is your last chance to try to parlay with this creature before he just kills you. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Clearly was, you've uh, never played with enough druids. <laughs> well, and then also like- the I, I was so happy when that came out in the books. Cause I'm like, finally, I have one girl who just constantly friends everything. Oh, I have one of those. I, I, I wanted yeah. one of the guys that he's like, I want to put a beholder into Ravenloft. I'm like, dude, that's that's probably not such a good idea. I mean, Stroud is already hard enough. I don't think it's a good idea to put it in there because that beholder is going to probably just can straight out kill the party before you even get to Stroud. Yeah. Oh, I had I, I was playing Cur like the one time I played Curse of Stroud, and I really would love to play Curse of Stroud fully, like from start to finish, because the one time I played Curse of Stroud. The uh, person's like, oh, well, I revamped it, so Curse of Strahd's actually more powerful than it normally is. Uh, and I'm like, okay, but that's... Uh, yeah, but you totally know how to balance a game more than an entire <laughs> building filled with Dungeons & Dragons nerds like Wizards. Oh, the, the DM definitely assured us that Strahd can kill us at any moment. And I was like, why, why, eh, why, uh, why bother then? You know, if this... Yeah, if this... cool, I'm, on, I'm at the whim of you, not the whim of... Yeah, it was. There are some the funny, bad DMs. <laughs> well, the, the funny part, like I told, like I was we telling you, know one, don't we? I know several. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I was telling mid earlier when I was, you know, bringing my, you know, finishing my campaign. Like I made sure they had all the magic. They had a few add magic items to basically so they could get to the final fight, and that's where I was trying to get them to. I didn't want to have to get think too much because I knew it was coming up sooner or later. And basically, it was sending them there. So you have all these magic items to help you win, to help you beat Strahd, and they completely forgot about them. I'm like, okay, so you're just gonna make this fight harder than it needs to be. And I wasn't really doing anything extravagant with Strahd other than just messing with them, staying out of vision, staying away, launching a couple of fireballs here and there, you know, take control of a character, charm them, and use that character to fight them. And it wasn't really anything extravagant. And it wasn't anything real hard. It was just Margaret is like. I'm gonna make you pay now because you weren't paying attention to your uh, to to the magic items you had available to help you win the fight. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, thank you for reminding me of that. That's another one. Don't even read about the books to get inspiration, or don't even read about monsters. Read about magic items. Read the lore behind some like really cool magic items, and that's also another way to get you out of the rut of uh, the DM block. But you also know what else is funny is like I tried to I drop a hint to them too. Like imagine if you could just hold a vampire because one of the items I had was I guess the ability was one of the, its ability was hold vampires within thirty. You know, all you had to do is uh, spend a charge and it could have held a vampire anywhere within a thirty foot radius. That would have helped them out a whole lot. But <laughs> and, and, they, and they still didn't pick up on it. So it's like one of those things. Like, so you're trying to help, but you're not. You're, you're, you don't want them to die, but you're also at the same time like, well, if you're not going to get my hint, I guess I'm just going to have to make it more painful for you. Yeah. There you go. You you want want them to have the Oh, I have this item and everyone's like, yeah, and they cheer you on the back. It's not as good when they use that item and they're like, oh, right, I have it. Yeah. It's... Yeah, and I wasn't about to tell them that they had the magic item because they should have remembered that they had it. Because they used it before. Now this Oh, that's just what level were they? Were they high? Uh, or... They were they were level eight when they went to go face Strahd. Oh, so they, were so really they didn't high. even have that much to manage in terms of like crap. Yeah, they died. <laughs> but they could have died. They should have died. Like it was down to two, and they got and they finally finished off Strahd. But you know, but sometimes it's the opposite way. I mean, and these are the experienced players I'm dealing with. You know, and other times you're you're dealing with uh, somewhat inexperienced players, but not they're not too inexperienced, but they're just not familiar with some of the mechanics of the game and you're trying to help them. I mean, you don't want your, your creatures to die too easy, but you're also trying to make sure that the players are getting a good experience uh, to make sure they don't they remember all about their abilities. Um, and one of the DMs I'm working with, that, the younger GM that I'm working with is he's keeping track of everything. I'm like, dude, that's just too much. I mean, you're gonna burn yourself out just because you're tracking everything for them. 
to yeah. make them do it. Make them track their own spells, their own spell descriptions. Oh, I do all, do of, all that stuff because the, he, he was he was doing it I all. Have, what, so like, I, I've been very I've been very blessed recently. I have a player that just takes impeccable notes and has keeps track of basically the entire the entire story. And yeah, what a gem! What a gem! Oh, <laughs> but. And and that, that's actually that's actually really helpful for a DM is to have is to have players to encourage your players like take notes, you know. A lot of players they think that their job is to show up, play, and then go home. But there's so much more that they can do. I used to have my players, um, before I before I did a lot of online play, I used to have a players like this. You are the designated initiative tracker, so, you know. You you took you you took care of initiative, so they would they would write down initiative, and it's like okay, who's next? Who's next? So it's just less for the DM to do, because the more you do, as a DM, the more that is put on you, the quicker you're going to get burned out, the quicker that you're going to be like, I don't want to do okay, this anymore. This, this, this. And so, yeah, I think that I think you're right on the money on that one. Mid is like you know, that's what frustrates you most is more like, you know, take a little initiative, like help. Help. I mean, I'm already, I already, and that's what I told him. It's like, do you already have enough to do? You're putting more on yourself than you need to. And I think, you know, with us, those of us who DM for a while, we can, we know where our stress level is. And it's more like we can manage it because we've done it and we know how to do it and, and it helped. But it doesn't mean it doesn't go away. It just means it just makes it more painful. Manageable. And you're like, yeah, yeah it's just manageable uh, instead of that way you're not feeling as burned out. And I think that's, that's the frustrating part is just, you know, making sure that the players, doesn't have to be overboard but doesn't have to be like underwhelmed like you said mid like you know where they just show up and don't really want to do anything i mean like a couple weeks ago i was playing i was playing a different character the dm's like man you're not really saying a whole lot well my character was a ninja by the way so i'm not saying a whole lot because she and she was a female and she was all covered up so she's trying to keep herself her identity secret zero style character yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it's a different style character but I'm, I'm also doing a different play style because my other character he's used to is always engaged and what's going on so i'm like i'm pulling back a little bit because of how i'm playing my character yeah mm -hmm. and he's like he's like man you're what's up john you're not doing anything i was like i my character she's not talking because she doesn't want to reveal herself <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, it's like you're saying it's really good to put responsibility i have a i have a player that does uh hp tracking Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, she, she, and she. We have a, we have a dry erase board, and she writes down on it. Ah, and everything so, like that. so with that, I like that because what I, well, I don't do that, but what I do do is I use. Um, you said she do. Uh, I do. Yeah. I use sheets, like um, well, like transparency sheets. So, and I give them like dry erase markers. Mm -hmm. I say, look, this is an easy way to keep track of your character, whether what spelt with spells or your hit points or your. What, or yeah. you, you just write it down and then when you're done you just erase it with it with the dry erase you just erase it with this little thing here and then you just keep track of it and i do that i've done that in person before and and some most players i do it with they like it they think it's a good idea i said look just keep that sheet and keep your character in there the only time you really need to change something is when you level up or you get an item or something you can write it on your sheet and then put the sheet back into it so this way you're not always doing erasing marks and then you know how that goes because then you, after a while you've been erasing a whole bunch and your character sheet gets messed up now I do want to I do want to say this I do want to make sure that this is um I'll let you that people know this that you're when you're listening that you understand this is that you should definitely talk to your players about taking some of the responsibilities off them but don't force your players to do it like don't make it a mandatory thing um you know ask like look you know this is a lot of stress you know keeping track of everything this is something that you know i don't want to do by myself and most players they, they understand that you know this is a game for everybody um you're always going to have some bad eggs and you know that dealing with those is probably going to be another uh, discussion that we'll have later on down the road but yeah. for the most part most deal with bad players. yeah most players want want you to have a, a nice enjoyable experience and they're they'll they're willing to help you out as best they can so just talk to them it's like look um can i get somebody to do this can i get somebody to um track it's, combat can i get somebody to track initiative yeah just the le the less that you have to do as a dm the easier it's going to be to keep your motivation up and running for as long as possible it, it's a it's the same as uh it's the same as when you're setting up a board game and no one's helping yeah it, they'll help just all you have to do is tell them which deck to shuffle 
you know, and, and, and ease them into it, too. Like, give them a responsibility like tracking the monster's health. A lot of characters love that. Because now that it's out in front of them, they're like, oh, man, we've been kicking this guy's ass a lot. Let's finish him off. And, like, hmm. and then they can, like, figure out the health max of, like, races. So that's a good one to start out with just to get a little bit off your back. And then, like, slowly introduce more thing like the team cartographer. Uh, the the mayor of the group is a good one. Um, honestly, for out of, for RPG part of the RPG or the RP part of the RPG is have someone whose vote counts. So it stays away from the whole like, oh, who goes through this door? Who goes through that door? I don't know. I da, ba, 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 ba. That person's vote counts twice. They are the designated team leader. Now this is very hard to get a good one of. You need a good group. You have a little bit, couple of poo poo players. Well, it's I, not so great. I sometimes but, make it part of the RP. You know, like yeah. you know, it, it's sometimes it's a cultural thing. It's sometimes it's culture. When you go to some of my, when you go to some of my cities and they, you want to talk to the most important person, they're only going to talk to the important person. Like so, it's like, oh, uh, who, who do I talk to? I'm not going to talk to the. I'm not going to talk to the group. Uh, who speaks for you? And uh, my the, my current. Person. Yeah, uh, my current group, they actually change out. So um, one city will be one player and another city will be the other player. So it's it's a revolving uh, it's revolving control. And it's basically whoever storyline is up front at the moment. So if we're yeah. dealing with somebody's I... backstory, they're the quote unquote main character. And then once that stuff is over, then it, it shifts again. I like that. That's a that's a that's an easy way to do it in the beginning, too, because like you have a small town mayor, a small town mayor might have a secretary or like a front guard mm -hmm. and the guard will be like who's talking to him not having all five of you buffoon yeah it's you know? it's a safety and, thing and i'm not going to have all five people in the room with the most important person of this town because there and, might and be and a shitload of mur murder hobos <laughs> you sent because now you're asking it's not you as the dm asking the players who speaks for you it's the character asking their pcs who speaks for them and that's a completely different like because mm -hmm. then they can get they take away all their like choices of like oh well Susie's a fucking moron but her character is <laughs> genius and has high charisma so <laughs> that's two different answers right <laughs> um, it. Uh, sometimes it's just all Susie's. sometimes it's just a simple thing as having a player remind people like I do this a lot when I'm playing my cleric, and we're on, we're out there, and, you know, we're getting ready to go into battle. So the first thing he does, bless, right? And then of course everybody forgets that they're blessed. <laughs> so when they go to attack, like they roll their d20, like, oh man, I missed. I'm like, did you remember that you're blessed? And they're like, now, oh, yeah. now to be fair, I don't do that. I if they have bless on and they forget it, that is not my responsibility. Well, that's true. I don't from a DM. From a DM Standpoint, but if I'm but a player, the, the cleric stuck. If, if I'm the player, you get, you get wasted, yeah. If yeah. I'm the player and I'm the cleric, I can remind them that they're. But you're right. If I'm yes. the DM and they forgot that they're blessed, you're absolutely right. It I'm is not gonna tell them. As yeah. a DM, it is not your job to know to know their abilities. They have to know their abilities. It is not your job to remind them about their bonuses. It is not your job because the only time it is is when you're doing the drunk midnight DMing to introduce people <laughs> in which case you have to remember everything they can do oh yeah well, or or, <laughs> or yeah, if they're like, new if they're new yes but yeah. If, yeah, if they're new yes i try to like i have new players and i'm trying to make sure they know what all their abilities are now if i tell them once i'm probably not going to tell them twice now like, i you, tell you, i i tell my burrito i told my burrito when she started playing dungeons and dragons i handhold up until level five up until level five i will hold your hand I will remind you about everything, but after level five, we have that means you've been playing four months. You should know your stuff. I, you know, for every every new player up to level five, I am your best friend. I will remind you. It's like, oh, don't forget this ability. Don't forget that. Oh, isn't your, you know, aren't you a goblin? Well, you have, um, you know, you can disengage as a bonus action. So why don't you go ahead and do that? At level five, 
the wheels come off and the it, it stops the the niceness stops and i am i'm an evil goblin and i will be an evil goblin forever <laughs> I, I, I will have to say as i'm recently got into uh especially online because um I, I love in person more than anything i don't know mm -hmm. um don't we but all? i recently got one online and i've been a bit of a a not a great player a not like not keeping tr like setting up your, not a, like a terrible player as in like you know being it, but more like forgetting to update a sheet until like two hours before the session because life sometimes gets in the way you know and it really it really opened up my eyes because i used to have that sort of like seriously dude like you're doing this as you're sitting at the table but like sometimes it happens so i can i try not to hold it against people i try to do i try to do a uh, dog training yeah how how you give your dog when he does something good you give him a, a good belly rub you know you give him encouragement <laughs> so when the barbarian you know you gave the barbarian to the easiest player right and they go oh wait i get to i get a plus two to damage because you reminded them the first time in the round and then you go is that it for damage and they go they say oh no plus two and you're like oh fuck i forgot about that like you act like you forgot and that encourages them to be like aha i am beating the dm now and and or you like put in you lower the one goblin's health by two so that that plus two made the killing blow you know for for those kind of players and i feel like that level of encouragement i always notice that my players don't forget it um post that because it becomes a more memorable like Oh, these little things are help me and urge me now. My other suggestion would be a um a tent like when you look it up uh for screenwriting, uh attention device. Something that like that holds information um and, and is delivered in a tense tense way. I.e. in Terminator when she had when um what's his name has to dump lore to Sarah Connor saying the Terminators after us, uh, you know, I'm from the future, yada, yada, yada. It's the lore dump. Um, you add tension to the situation. Okay, the cops are after them. It's mid chase scene. Um, you get sent, my best way for this is like you're sent to a bar to ask for a name, and several people turn to you, and you notice several heads the second you say that name. That adds a bit more tension to it. So when uh, like they actually finally get to interact, it's a, they're trying to listen more. There's more of a tense situation. Someone tries to interrupt. Chase ensues during chase. Like you're able to you're able to bring out that information, i.e., like in Terminator. Uh, but yeah. So there is so there's one there's a few other things that I want to I want to cover before we uh, head out tonight. Um, one of uh, one of them is that. And one of the and the one of the things that we haven't really touched on is taking a break. Just don't mm. just don't DM. Um, you have a full you have a full table of players. One of them can take up the reins for a one shot. Um, you they can use a source. They can run through. They can run you guys through a module. And being a player will give you such a more profound respect of being a DM. Because I have like sometimes I take a I take a break from DMing and I just like I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to be a player and I will go I will go find a random game and I'll play for a little bit and then that gets that that gets my DM juices going once. Another thing is that you will get burned out if you do the same thing over 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 and over again. So if you are in combat, if you are in combat and combat and combat it's going to get boring. It's going to get mundane. And um, both of you, Bishop and Sock, you guys do very, very good with switching it up. So we'll do so one session. You'll do combat, and then there will be some cockamamie puzzle that my druid ends up in like the the freezing cold river. So I to solve it, Sock. Um, oh yeah, I did toss you in that river. It did. With the Roper. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and there'll be a there'll be a puzzle, and then. Um, with the combat there'll be a puzzle with the combat and then 
or there'll be like just a there'll be a session of role play and trying to talk to some ancient uh some ancient spirit in a tomb and trying to figure out that mystery bishop uh <laughs> it's like ah oh! and then you know but changing it up making sure that you know each session is a little bit different and you can act and i and i have like a checklist too it's like okay well we had a session of combat we had a session of puzzles we had a special session of rp um so you know i kind of want to do you know i kind of want to just have a goof off session you know just they're in town um shenanigans are going to happen um so one of the things i like doing you know, not just puzzles but riddles riddles I've done it i've done riddles a couple times and it's funny to watch the players especially the one time i did it in person i think i did it on roll 21 time and they were still like oh my god but i did it the last i think it was a couple weeks ago i did it and we were and they were like and then one of the players knew it too he's like sat down and they're like okay riddle time and he's like ah oh, son of a <laughs> now i did a riddle for dunes of a call and it was like i think it was like the second to last episode of dunes of a call and i didn't know that that i it was a very simple riddle it was a, a very simple answer i didn't know that that was going to take most of the session like most of that most of that session had to be cut out because they were just arguing back and forth over the riddle fantastic way to run a game you know because they're just talking they're role playing they're talking they're arguing back and forth but for me trying to record a session me trying to have something that's for entertainment value not the best idea so but riddles are fan but riddles are fantastic and the nice part about it is is that there are just entire websites books you know yeah. everything just dedicated to riddles if you're and oftentimes you, you can give clues or hints if they're struggling uh, and i've done that with some of the puzzles i've done where i've like okay here are the puzzle pieces they're but they're broken they're scattered over the floor so you have to figure out basically you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle at that point and you're hoping you're finding the right pieces to put in the right spots i ha i've had player now i've had players that like i roll such and such for my intelligence i solve the riddle it's like doesn't work that way yeah um but i what i will do if if they roll high enough on their intelligence i will highlight important parts of the riddle that will give them clues like these words are the ones that stand out to you the most and they're like oh okay yeah, I had to do yeah, that. That's I always... had to do that a couple, like, two weeks ago. I had to give them like they were they were struggling with the one they they were struggling with was basically the answer was waterfall. But I was trying to give them hints and clues like it flows and it it falls, but falls over and drop. And they're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that that always sucks, like when it doesn't pull through because you want. We've all seen it when they when the one person gets it and everyone cheers for them. Like that's. That's what we aim for as a DM. We want everyone to cheer for that one player who like did did it. Yeah. And that's what's great about puzzles, but so when you give it away, it always sucks. Like you you, you rob that moment of someone, but you're you're hitting that precipice of uh, of getting frustrated oh, and uh, solving it. Really getting frustrated yeah. and being like fuck this thing. Well, but uh, that is that is a good way riddles is you can do that the opposite. Look up a riddle and just honestly, you can even get a spark from that, like a riddle. Oh, the answer is hourglass. Oh, I'll just throw this some somewhere and like it, it takes the smallest things to uh, to help springboard an idea. So, but, and also not if they were if they were doing the puzzles and they were and they got it wrong, just to mess with them, I would just have like a random encounter happen just to just to say, oh, you got that wrong, and then they're like, oh man, now we gotta figure this out, and then you try to give them a little bit of hints. Now, now. Um, and you know, um, before before we leave tonight, because uh, we are running out of time, but um, baby. but but no, it's just you know, it's I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have these videos run too long. Um, but before we before we run out of time, a very interesting is they have multiple ways to solve the problem. So like, if they can't solve the riddle and they say the wrong answer, then you send out some type of temple guardian to fight them. If they fight and they win. Well, then they just use the they just use the entrance that the temple guardian did. They just go through that door, you know. <laughs> so, um, just, it's just some things to keep the pacing up. Oh. Yeah, that, that's why that's why as you mentioned before with the roper, I love combining combat with puzzle. One of my 
One of my favorite ones, and I suggest everyone use this one, it's a favorite, is circle room or square room, whatever, big room. Center on a on a step and then a pedestal is a floating mirror. And there's nothing else in the room and that's it. It's just an end room. Um, but essentially, if someone tries to approach that mirror, they are suddenly attacked. And depending on the amount of parties, you can vary, you know, what kind of creatures attacking them, but no one can see them in their face. So just, it's just, someone's just murdering them. And generally what the rule is, is it's the mirror. So you can see, you can only see the creature when you look through it through the mirror. So someone has to operate it while, um, while everyone else is like staring at the mirror and like look and fighting sideways, you know, I think and it's a, you it's did a that to great way. Yeah. I think I did it with you. You did, you did it with me. And I think we, I think we broke it. Cause we didn't. We didn't use the mirror exactly the way you wanted. No, the, the, no, you guys did. I remember. Uh, uh, did we? Uh, yeah, barbarian guy. Oh, okay. Actually grabbed the mirror first. Okay. And started moving it. And it at him. Okay. I, I don't, um, I don't remember it. I don't remember. I, I, cause I don't remember using the mirror. I think, yeah, I think yeah. the barbarian was just calling out orders like whack this. <laughs> yeah 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 he wasn't great um but yeah no that's a great way and then like through the mirror you can see where the other where the door is to the next room and stuff um but yeah no that's a great way because then you can also you can also force a character to partake without combat too so like that's always a cool way of also making the dungeon longer without straining so much like damage mm -hmm. and like spell slots on people is like you have to complete this puzzle while these people are fighting and then swap it the next time like someone else so like i would love the next room that wizard that solved the puzzle he's ready to take on the next room while everyone else is a actually actually that's going to be a couple of skeletons actually that's going to be another um another segment that we're going to be doing called um dungeons you're doing it wrong and I definitely want you back for that one because I definitely want to hear more about this. Yeah. Um, but to quickly recap, so the things that we discussed today for making sure that if you are burnt out, A, take a look at the, the Wizards of the Coast books. Take a look at the modules that they run for RP ideas. Take a look at the Monster Manual. Read Monster Lore, you know? Make sure... Uh, take a look. At, take a look at Folklore... Take, um, you know, just, and, you know, watch T, you know, take a look at shows, take a look at, you know, media, you know, there's, there's tons of inspiration out there, uh, that you guys can readily use. The nice part about, <laughs> the nice part about, uh, this game is, is that, um, no one's really charging money for it, so you can plagiarize as much as you want. <laughs> One of the things I'd like to add is, uh, Tasha's Cauldron does a good job of, um, looking at think of parlay uh, most of us before they came out with didn't really think about parlay it was either kill the boss so mm -hmm. you win or you died well there's a tosh just gives you another option yeah you can try to parlay and i think it gives it does give some good scenarios it gets to give some creative ideas if you're struggling with something you, you don't have to you know kill everyone it, there could be a parlay and just think about how you want to parlay with the boss to uh, to make it all good and the, and the characters get to live and but they but at a price exactly and talk to your players. Talk to your players to take some of the work off of your shoulders. You are not an island. You don't have to. You don't have to do it all alone. Your players are a fantastic resource for you. Ask them. It's like, hey, can somebody, you know, do this? Can someone keep track? Can someone take notes for me so I don't have to do all this myself? And nine times out of ten you get an amazing response there will be players that are more than willing to help out because they enjoy the story just as much as you do and the less it feels like work the more you're going to be motivated to continue on with your fantastic story so talk to your players talk to other dms you know some dms i you know thalor he was a fantastic dm by the by um he has just years of like modules maps and things like that and sometimes i'll just say hey i don't have anything and you know he'll be like oh well you know how about you know this or here um i have a pdf of an old adventure i ran um 
maybe you can if you can convert it into fifth edition there you go so i guess that's my that's my real tip for you just call thalor and have him do it the work for you that's what you should do <laughs> Well, I'll trust me, I have, I, I have some older campaigns, and actually, I just converted one of them to 5e. But, but yeah, you could, like, I have second edition campaigns, <laughs> but you, you're like, you're. it's not too hard to convert them to 5e. You just get, get rid of the Thacko, get rid of the saving throws, and just use the monsters are already in there. Just use them with 5e. Yeah. The story it doesn't change much, and yeah. it, it actually makes it easier on you. Yeah, and definitely, definitely talking to another DM, like, person to person helps a lot because you usually think their t idea is terrible and you can do it better mm -hmm. and that's immediate inspiration thank you all so much for listening <laughs> thank you uh thank you guys so much for being with us if you did like uh the information that we gave you if you did find us entertaining please don't forget to comment subscribe uh like the video they help us out more than you want uh, more than you can ever imagine but <laughs> i'd like to end this um the way that we ended it the way the way that we usually end it the uh the sunday nights of breaking the chain. Um, Poe, can you uh, can you ask the minstrels to play us out, please? Um, what was that? There it is. Uh, now I do say, minstrels, play us out! <laughs> gotcha.